The Toronto Raptors moved to 6-1 and at home, 112-104, spoiling Kyle Lowry's return. Season high for OG Ananobi, steady performance from Fred Van Vliet, and nice to see Scotty Barnes looking a lot more like his normal self. Unfortunately, the Raptors suffer yet another injury. I'm going to get into that. I'm going to give you my three key takeaways. I'm going to give you my final thoughts. If you're new around here, my name is Robert. This is Pensari Basketball. Make sure to hit like, subscribe if you haven't already. Grab your coffee and let's get into it. So my first key takeaway is that the Raptors get a fairly steady performance from Fred Van Vliet. 7 for 21 is not great. 3 for 10 from 3 is probably not great. And if you're just looking at the box score, you're probably going to assume that he just had another chucking performance. But take it from me. I watched the game and I think that most of the shots that he took were in rhythm and good shots. He just didn't make them. I think usually a lot of those shots that he took tonight probably go in. He's coming back from an injury, so... Clearly, there's going to be a little bit of rust, but for the most part, I think he made really smart plays. And there was an exact play to that low light film that I made a few days ago where I was criticizing him for not seeing Christian Coloco cutting to the basket. And today, not only does he see him cutting to the basket, he places the alley-oop perfectly. There's probably an advantage for an undersized guard going up against another undersized guard, right? Kyle Lowry's a hell of a defender, but one thing he is not is tall and or long, right? So... While it may impact your shooting performance to go up against a guy like Kyle Lowry because he's going to get into your body and all that stuff, one of the things that he can't do is he can't impair, completely impair your field of vision the way that a guy like Ayo DeSumo or Tyrese Maxey, Tyrese Halliburton, look at all the big guards in the NBA that Fred Van Vliet has to go up against. And sometimes I don't properly, I don't, you know, I don't give proper credit to the fact that this is a guy who's 5'11", 6 foot who's not very long, not very quick, not very athletic, and he will sometimes have to initiate an offense against a guy who might be 6'5 with a 7-foot wingspan. Honestly, if you're as big a critic of Fred Van Vliet's passing as I have been over the last few years, honestly, this is one of those nights where you just have to just clap and give the man his flowers. He did a really good job tonight. Second takeaway, you are not going to win most NBA games when you allow the other team to shoot 55% from the field, 37% from three, and 86% from the line. They take more threes, they make more threes, and somehow you still lose. How the hell did that happen? Well, for the Raptors, I think them winning comes down to two things. Number one, offensive rebounding. Really, it's just their front court's efficiency on both ends. OG Ananobi, Thaddeus Young, and Scotty Barnes combined for 11 offensive rebounds. The Raptors end up taking 86 field goal attempts. The Heat take 66. That's the game. That is the game right there. The Raptors get three very efficient performances from their front court. OG Ananobi, Thaddeus Young, and Scotty Barnes all shot over 64% from the field tonight. That is just, you know, that's incredible. And especially, I mean, you needed that because for the Heat, they had two players who really didn't score, Jamal Kane and Duncan Robinson. You take those two guys out, the Heat basically shot 60% from the field. There's not a single player who played for them who didn't shoot 50% from the field. They didn't stop anybody. They limited the number of attempts that Jimmy Butler takes But apart from that, you really don't stop anybody. You don't force anybody to miss. You put them on the line. So frankly, you don't get those offensive rebounds. You don't win this game. So as Kawhi would say, board man gets paid. (laughs) My final point is that there's no I in team. I've said it before and I will continue to say it. When you think about Allen Iverson, what do you think of? Three key moments in his career, crossing Jordan, stepping over Ty Lue, and the practice ran. Everything was about the individual. Kobe, 81 points right? We think about individuals a lot more than we think about team. Basketball is a team sport. The NBA is not a team business. The NBA is a business built on individuals because teams change. Individuals do not. Individuals are marketable. I do not resent anybody who had the narrative that so-and-so carried the team, right? Every time somebody scores over 25 points, it's Fred Van Vliet carried the team. Scotty Barnes carried the team. Pascal Siakam carried the team. There was a very loud minority in the comments section a couple of weeks ago saying that the Raptors would be 0-6 or 0-5 without Pascal Siakam, that he was above criticism because, you know, you, you couldn't win without the guy. Well, right now you are seeing that not only can you win without him, you can also win without Gary Trent Jr. You can also win without Precious Achua. This is a team. Tonight, the Raptors lose Delano Banton. They lost Otto Porter Jr., who, in my opinion, is one of their best players. They've lost Precious Achua, who is their best rebounder. Pascal Siakam, who is their best scorer. 
They've lost Gary Trent Jr., who's probably one of their best isolation scorers. And despite all of that, tonight, they pulled together for a win. On the back of the playmaking of Fred Van Vliet and the sheer offensive and defensive hustle and rebounding of Scotty Barnes, OG Ananobi, and Thaddeus Young. This is a team. They play like a team. And when they play like a team, they will win. I understand that beating an undermanned Miami Heat team is not grounds for I told you so. But I told you so. The Raptors were more undermanned tonight than the Heat were. This was a fair matchup. In terms of my player of the game, of course, OG Ananobi, 32 points, extremely efficient. He scored through the month of November. OG is 20.6 points per game on 47% shooting. And over the last three, he's at 25.6 points per game and his percentages have gone up. Far be it for me to say OG Ananobi has arrived. That might be a hot take and it might be reactionary because overall, I don't think he's had that great a season so far. His defense has been really good. But for the most part, I think that he has another step to take. And as one of my favorite players, I can't wait to see him take it because as the season has gone on, he has become increasingly more comfortable with his role in the offense. And he looks more and more comfortable with the ball in his hands. There were five or six plays tonight where I was positive that there are moves that he's making right now that he could not make 12 months ago. The development is showing with OG Ananobi. Him and Scotty really were the game plan for the Heat tonight. And they both did such an incredible job, not only creating for themselves, but also creating for others, sucking in the second defender. I think they both played incredibly. So great win, great team win. The Raptors will be without Delano Banton for the foreseeable future, probably for at least a week to two weeks with that ankle sprain. Otto Porter already out. Next man up, mentality. Jeff Doughton Jr. Hopefully Justin Champagny can feel a little bit better with that lower back soreness that he's been having. But maybe the Raptors will need to call in a 10-day or Ron Harper Jr. or someone like that. Man, this is... Get him out of the way early. But, you know, for all the injuries and for the strength of schedule for the Raptors to end this stretch, 9-7, and kudos. Kudos where kudos are due. To do this with so many games back-to-back and so many home-and-homes and... It's just one of the most brutal schedules I've ever seen the Raptors start out with. And I said before the season started, if they end 20 games, 10 and 10, they're great. They might actually have a chance to be a little bit better than that. So if you haven't already, hit subscribe, hit like. Catch you next time. Peace. those jumpers knock down a few of them early how much does that help from a confidence standpoint to see the ball go to the net early in the game like that uh, i feel like i always really try to start the game aggressive uh, but it, of course it feels really good when some shots start to fall uh give you more energy more juice you know so i feel like at, at, it's a great feeling to start off the game making shots being able to get things going uh, I feel like it's been be- felt really good. Is that, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Is that the type of thing where if you see one or two fall, you'll you'll keep on going with it, and if not, it's like time to find something else? Or no, I, I feel like I'm when I no matter what the solution is, I'm always keep trying to play harder, try to get a bag at the next play. Just keep trying to stay aggressive, stay confident, keep trying to do what I work on. I feel like I work on my game a lot, so. Everybody always try to tell me to stay confident, be who I am on the floor, try to bring energy. Um, shots not falling, try to find a different way to do things. But eventually today it was, it was falling. Scotty, when you're weighing that kind of take take a jumper or drive, are you more so focused on your defender and how much space he's giving you, or are you more so looking at the second line of defense when you make that decision? I don't really know. I'm just playing the game. If I see somebody in the gap really heavy, I, I'm just making reads. If I see somebody drawing from the corner, I'm trying to find different things. Whatever a different defense is giving me, it's really what I'm trying to. That's what I'm taking. Um, most of the time, I'm really trying to get to the rim, really be aggressive, start off there, and then try to get everything going from there. With Siakam out and also Fred out for some of these games, trying like a lot more has been on your shoulders these past few games. Do you embrace that challenge of, of having to do more, especially offensively, or? 
has it gotten you frustrating at times to just be asked to do so much? Um, I don't think it's been frustrating at all. Of course, I'm going to really embrace it, be who I am on the floor. I feel like I can, of course, the ball's in my hand a little more when those two are out, but just trying to take the game how it is, uh, trying to make the right reads, trying to really be aggressive every time I get it. Just trying to do the right things while I'm out there on the floor. Uh, I don't say I back down from it. I really embrace it. Both things play so. hard. Both things play hard. Both things play hard. God bless and good night. Scotty, I know you're a confident guy, and something that Thad was talking about the other day, too, that that confidence doesn't really waver. But how much does it help to have vets like Thad or Fred or Pascal to sort of kind of help keep you balanced here during a, a bit of a shooting slump? says I feel like it's a big thing um, I remember on the road Pascal Fred telling me stay being aggressive be grateful um, them boys giving me the confidence when I'm out there on the floor I feel like that's a big thing I feel like I really took that to heart them boys texting me they're at home uh, doing what they trying to do to get better they're at home telling me that I feel like that's a big thing that telling me to keep being aggressive don't take things all keep the pressure on your shoulders. And I feel like that's a big thing. Everybody can just give me that confidence from the coaches to the players, having that support staff around me. I feel like that's helpful. I know you've tweaked the angle a few times over the last few weeks. Is that something that's been bothering you at all? No, uh, no, not at all. Scotty, um, like a lot of people on the outside look at things a little differently because it's your second year. So, you know, you had slumps last year. No, made a big deal of it because everything was so new. Do you look at yourself a little differently? Like, do you, are your own expect, expectations a little higher? And, um, you know, so if you go through a rough patch, you handle a little differently than you do. I wonder, I wonder about him. I don't know. I don't know. Joining Scotty at center court, please welcome the vice chairman and president of the Toronto Raptors, Masai Ujiri. I feel like my rookie year went kind of smooth. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, but, yeah, of course, I feel like the first thing is is taking on the challenge. You can see that I'm in a bit of a shooting slump. I, I realize that. I recognize that. But just trying to stay confident, you know, get through it. Keep trying to be aggressive. Trust your work. Trust your craft. I feel like that's what's going to really get me through it every single day. Uh, don't try to really get down on myself. Just trying to just push through it. What you work on is going is going to show. I feel like the work always going to show. Scotty, what are the main things you're learning with your reps at the point this year, say compared to last year, especially now with Pascal? <laughs> Want to get away? <laughs> Southwest has your ticket to freedom. I would say I'm still trying to. I'm still figuring things out. Say, recognizing throughout film, uh, I feel like we've been having some tough third quarters. Just recognizing when and where that. That momentum changes what I can do better in those situations. Um, I feel like that's one of the key things I'm. you can see I'm still learning out there. Uh, just trying to find those pinpoints of what I can do differently, how I can get us into offensive set better, um, trying to make those right plays. I feel like I'm still learning, and um, with the more reps I get, I'm just getting better. I feel like I'm making great reads while I'm out there on the floor. But like I said, I'm still getting better.